Welcome to your daily writing habit. If you are writing a book or thinking about it, or maybe you've started writing your book, but you need some help getting it done, you are in the right place. Good morning, everyone. I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh. If you're looking for me online, look for Christine Inc., like that stuff we write with. Each day, I'm sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 20 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success as an author, and they can even turn someone who barely sees themselves as a writer into a published book author. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. And once again, good morning, everyone here today on the show to talk about the best strategies to create content to promote your book is my guest, content marketing strategist, Melanie Hershorn. Melanie and I have known each other online for some time now, and I appreciate how she is a valuable resource to the members of my Inc. Authors group on Facebook. Here's a little bit more about Melanie. Melanie Hershorn wants to make your book and brand sparkle online. As a content marketing strategist for coaches, consultants, and speakers worldwide, she's on a mission to support and empower her clients to create clear messaging and content that shines a light on their individual experience, skill set, and books. With her unique combination of entrepreneurship, award-winning journalism, and PR experience, Melanie guides her clients to attract and nurture leads and position themselves as industry experts. She also loves to provide content marketing tips on her show, Authority, Author, Authority Marketing Live. Welcome, Melanie, and hopefully you can correct what I just tried to do with the name of your show at the end there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christine. Yeah, it's Authority Marketing Live because it's for authors. So, and ah, we're authors. Yeah, the author, for those who aren't visually watching the script the way I am, <laughs> author is all capitalized. So it's Authority Marketing Live, and it's quite clever because author is all caps. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into content marketing strategy as a profession? Well, it's a pretty circuitous route. Um, in the bio you just read, you heard PR, you heard journalism. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so was, um, a, I started my entrepreneurial journey about a decade ago, designing and manufacturing breastfeeding clothing, actually, um, wow. which – not usually the next step after you're a radio uh, anchor and reporter, but that's what I did. And so I, I learned all this amazing stuff about being an entrepreneur and about marketing your stuff online. And I just fell in love with it. And then I hired somebody to help me with my marketing. And she turned out to be pretty awful. She was uh, verbally and emotionally <laughs> me and basically told me that I was boring and that I couldn't write. How could you have a master's degree in journalism and not write? And so I just started feeling worse and worse and eventually I shut the business and I thought, well, what can I do now? Why don't I take all the great stuff that I have learned about marketing, both from being a business owner, as a journalist, as a PR, um, as a publicist, and and, one, and the things that I actually learned from this woman, why don't I take all that stuff, support people who need help with their marketing, and show them that they can do it too in a very happy, wonderful, non-abusive way. So <laughs> that's kind of how I got into marketing. And then it just, authors started to come to me. Um, it, it was just such a natural progression. At first I was helping entrepreneurs, and then I thought, well, I can help all these amazing business owners who have written a book because oftentimes, you know, people write a book and then they go, well, now what? You know, I, I, I want people to know who I am. I want people to buy copies of my book. I want to speak on stages. I want to fill programs, but I don't know how to do it. So I help authors create that VIP online platform, you know, with their social media, their email marketing, basically letting people know that they are the authority in their space and guess what they wrote the book on it that is awesome and you know my clients are so the authors that i work with are so forward thinking they don't usually wait until now what they're asking on day one of the process but then what as in then what happens after the I book is published right i love that that's the best that's the best when people are forward thinking because then 
we can have that platform ready to go before the book is ever published, which is already now a built-in audience to buy the book. Absolutely. I mean, I was talking to a coaching client about that this morning, actually, just a couple hours be, before our call. And she was asking me, you know, she's just starting the writing of her book. And she was saying, you know, how, how is it ever too soon to start, you know, with the email list and the website and the brand and the marketing? I said, absolutely not. Because you're asking, is it ever too soon to start having an organic, friendly conversation with your future readers and form a bond with them so that when your book comes out, they'll be just so gosh darn excited. They can't wait to buy it. I think the answer, I don't think it's ever too soon. Oh, absolutely. I love how you said that, Derek, because it's so true. And people feel, I don't know, it's almost like they compartmentalize it in their heads and they go, well, must get book finished. <laughs> and then, yes. must do yeah. But it is, it's a free-flowing thing that, yes, having conversations, getting that organic reach ahead of time, then you don't feel like a deer in headlights once you know what your published date because you already have this built-in system. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And especially when I'm always, you know, I call it an organic conversation with your readers. You've, I've, you, I know you've listened to my show. And so I try to get people away because I know a lot of authors, especially the introverted ones, they hear the M word. One of my authors actually calls it the M word, marketing, and they freak out and everything. I'm just like, okay, if that word makes you nervous, how about just talking to people, talking to readers about like, oh my gosh, I had a story that was inside me and I'm so excited about it. And I finally shared it. And I can't wait to share it with you because I can't wait to hear how it impacts your life. I mean, how about a normal human conversation if, if the word, if, you know, if the M word freaks you out so much? Right. And I feel like part of that is, is that those people who do quote unquote bro marketing have really done a disservice to authors everywhere. You know, the people, I'm talking about the people who you see their Facebook ads, they're lying yep. uh, out on a Lamborghini with the ocean in the background. <laughs> you can be rich like me. Ha, ha, ha. All you have to do uh, is pull the wolf all these people's eyes and then you'll be rich like me. No. <laughs> Marketing is really just telling people about what you're doing and inviting them into your community. And it doesn't Absolutely. have to be Thing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be negative. It can be really positive because, you know, people say selling is serving. Well, so is marketing. You're providing people with amazing value. And if you know your worth and you know that you can offer people great things, why would you hold back? You're going to only be helping the world. I mean, that's basically why I do what I do. My mission is to help authors amplify their voices online so that together we can make this world a better place. That's what your marketing is about. Yes. And it sounds like, I think the answer to my next question, what do you love most about what you do? I, I can just kind of like feel in that statement that that's your mission is what is what you love most about what you do. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely that is that is it. And and secondarily, I love when, you know, I people are able to tell me all this stuff and then I can boil it down into a sentence. And then they're like, yes. Yes, that's it. And I say, well, you just said that. And it's this, it's yeah. this, um, it's, it's a, they feel good about themselves knowing that they were on the right track the whole time. And then I feel good knowing that they know that they're on the right track because we get so stuck in our heads, especially with marketing. You know, we feel like we have to check all the boxes. Did I post on Instagram today? Did I send an email today? But it's more than that. It's really about inviting people in, and it's, it's about, you know, knowing that you know in your heart why you're doing it, starting with your mission every single day. Absolutely. I, th I think our approach is exactly the same way. It's funny for what I do know about the, I, I'm, I stay on the content marketing side. So I told, you know, with you, so, and really sticking with authors, but so on the same page. So we mm -hmm. talk a lot here on the show about writing habits, obviously my three ones, my big ones, writing fundamentals, productivity, and my mindset habits. But I would love to hear what your top content marketing habits are for authors. In other words, what should all authors be doing consistently in terms of content creation? Okay, so you already said the first one, consistency. Yay. They should they should be consistent consistently. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's hard to say and sometimes hard to do, and that's why I provide support in that department. And, you know, maybe you have the strategy and then you hire a virtual assistant to help you with the implementation. But consistency is number one. Um, number two is messaging. Well, I guess you could switch them. They're kind of interchangeable, really. 
messaging. Because if your messaging is not on point, if it isn't really resonating with your intended audience, you're basically talking to nobody. You know when they say stop trying to please everybody? It's the same thing. You have to think about the one person, that one group of people you're going to be helping with your book, and that's who you want to talk to every single day. And then with that consistency piece, you just have to keep repeating yourself. Because even though you feel like a broken record, some people are just hearing it for the very first time. And so the third piece then, I love, I'm going to borrow from you, mindset, because <laughs> many of us get in our own way. There's a marketing mindset. Is it, you know, we get in our own way. Oh, people aren't going to want to hear this again. Oh, I'm, I'm too narcissistic. Like I had, a, I had a client who wouldn't post a picture of herself. She said, it's too narcissistic if I post a picture of myself. And I said, no, no, it's not. Because humans intuitively are much more interested in a picture of another human than we are of a thing or a, you know, a quote or whatever. We want to see eyes. We want to sort of have that back and forth. We want humanity. And so we worked through that and she started posting pictures of herself and she saw that it wasn't a narcissistic thing at all. It was in fact letting people in. And so I would say having the right mindset around what you're doing and not feel like you're being a burden or you're emailing people too much, knowing that what you are doing is providing value and helping your audience and your community. Absolutely. And so many things, what you just said that I love. Uh, first of all, the, the seeing faces, I mean, that's scientifically proven by studies that that's the first thing that newborn babies respond to are human faces. And to think that what we just, that we totally evolve away from that and we don't respond to human faces. I mean, it's scientifically proven that humans respond to human faces more than anything. So you have scientific backing on that point. <laughs> love uh, Thanks. Yeah. And the thing about being repetitive and thinking that you're boring people. See, I, I was like that too with my content. And that's why I always preach to my authors like, no, you're not being repetitive because number one, there are people like you just said that have never seen your content, especially the way social media algorithms are. They, they've never seen it. So they're seeing it for the first time, even though you think you're boring people. And then I've even talked to a few of my quote unquote, what I call my super fans, people that have just followed my Christine Inc. brand for, for like at least a decade, maybe longer. <laughs> and I'm just like, all right, you've got to be bored with the stuff I'm saying because you've been hearing there's a few of them like you've been hearing me say this stuff for like 10 15 years maybe longer and one of them in particular she made a really good point she's like no I'm absolutely not bored every time you talk about the same thing because if you're saying it, it means I need to be reminded of it so that's the only way I'm going to be able to really achieve mastery in it is to hear you say that so whenever you say something even though I've been hearing you say it for 15 years I say oh yeah that's a great point. I do need to be reminded of that as an author. And that's why habits are so important for, for authors, because it is, you know, mastery is a habit. And part of that is being reminded of the same things. And I always, you know, kind of preach on the podcast here, if I'm harassing you all about something, it's probably because I need to be reminded of it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but it's so true. And remember, you and I, who we are today is not who we're going to be next week. So even if we have said something or we're, we posted about something and somebody heard it doesn't mean that what they hear today is what they're going to hear when you say the same thing next week. Absolutely. And another thing I always say on the show is even if you think you've heard me talk about a subject, guaranteed, I'm, I'm, I'll t talk about it five different times. I'll talk about it five different ways. So, you know, if I talk about a subject on a podcast episode this year that maybe I talked about last year, I'll talk about it. And like you're saying, I'll talk about it in a different way. I'll add something different this year because I'm different as a book coach, as a ghostwriter, as, a, as an expert this year than I was last year. Exactly. So keep going. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. So I think those are your three. So in addition to the steps that you just listed, just kind of current wise, you know, 2022, is there anything else you're seeing that you would recommend for authors in terms of their content creation based on any kind of like trends or anything that's happening right now that you're seeing in business? Absolutely. So people are trending away from being perfect online and the the goal really is authenticity. And I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but I want you to realize that people will be attracted to you and to your book and to your content based on who you are. And trying to be somebody you're not, it's going to get old really quick for you and you're not going to be able to keep doing it. So 
just stand in your authenticity and be you and be proud to be you because you have your individual skill set and your individual experiences and you are an expert in what you do. Absolutely, especially authors. You're enough of an expert that people want to read a whole book about what you have to say. So yes, stand in that, own that, authors. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, speaking of yeah, current events, another kind of question, obviously lots has been going on in the world, and we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of it in the last couple of years. Do you kind of have like a best practice or recommendation on if or how authors who are doing social media regularly, they have a content strategy, incorporating those current events? Do they, are they supposed to always address what's going on in the world or only if it's on brand for them? Or kind of what's, what's the balance of just like I don't want to seem like I'm tone deaf about what's happening in the world, but I also don't kind of want to get you know, the sleeves rolled up and totally into to it, especially since so many of the things turn out to be controversial. Isn't it such a delicate balance, Christine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I think it is a case-by-case -case basis. So if your book is about current events, then you're probably going to want to be commenting on current events. If your book is how to, you know, find work-life balance, do you need to talk about a war happening in Europe? Probably not. So the other thing when you're creating content we create content that is evergreen as often as possible. That means that if somebody sees it today, somebody sees it in four years from now, it's still going to resonate with them. So I always say, you know, err on the side of caution in that you're creating things that are on brand and that are not going to be dated. So, you know, if you write a blog post and it has to do with something going on in the world at that exact moment, you know it's probably going to end whatever that thing is, and mm -hmm. that blog post is not going to be relevant really anymore, or, or it won't, the way you framed it isn't going to be as relevant as it was. For example, the pandemic. Um, you know, we, some people say we are in a post-pandemic world, and other people say we're still in the throes of it. So I say, just avoid it. Nobody wants to hear about it anymore, um, unless your book is about the pandemic, in which case, you keep talking about that. And um, one more thing that I will say about that is if you, you know, m maybe there's another kind of um, social or economic movement or something that is very, very now, and maybe they have a day where, you know, all social media has like everybody posts red on their Instagram. You can do that too if you want. If that feels right to you. Is it tone deaf? You're going to have to be the judge of that based on what you do and who your audience is. So it is in some ways a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, and to your point about the pandemic, I, I don't know if you've seen, I, I've done some content on that on my blog, and the way I did it was I framed it through my memoir, which is called The Power of the Curve, and my whole memoir is based on how to find strength in life's surprises. So I did it, right. it will be evergreen, where the pandemic is an example of like, hey, here's a way that we were all surprised at the same time. And hey, my memoir happens to be about how to find strength in life's curves. So I, I connected it. And you know what's really funny, Melanie, is yeah. back in no, November 2019 is when I set the date for the launch of my memoir, June 2020. And everybody said, wow, you really planned that perfectly, that your memoir came out like right at the, the beginning of a pandemic in the curve. And I said, yeah, yeah that, that date was set in November of 2019. How did that work out? Oh. So interesting. And yes, I love how you talk about that because that is true. So that's the lens that you're looking through. It's not just going, hey, this is happening today. It's, it's a whole lens and a way to look at things and then to broaden it out. I love that. Good job. Thank you. Yes, always sure. encouraging my my authors to, you know, if you want to tie things to current events, your life story probably has a million different opportunities for you to connect those dots while bringing people back to your memoir. Absolutely. Yeah, so is there anything else we haven't covered today that you'd like to cover about any any more advice for my audience of authors about creating content? One thing I would love to say, if that's all right, it's it's important to have that author platform because if somebody, let's say you get a call from the Today Show and you're all excited and you go on the Today Show and everybody's talking about your book and 
And then you realize that the only thing, the only place you can send people to is a website that really hasn't been developed yet and the messaging is all confusing and you don't have a freebie to offer people or a way to grab email addresses, then you've just wasted an opportunity. So having that platform laid out where people can lurk, they can see what you're up to, they can get value from you, they can get to know, like, and trust you, that is vital in you know, stepping into that influence or role that authors deserve to be in. Yes, and even outside your example of the Today Show, I'll just say just on a regular human level, if I, if you get my attention somehow, even just through your social media posts, a blog or whatever, so even outside of your know, massive publicity Today Show, because I can hear a lot of authors hearing this, okay, well, I'm not going to be on the Today Show anytime soon or whatever. It's like, well, what if I see your Facebook post and you tell like this really interesting story that tugs at my heartstrings and then you say something about that you're writing a book or whatever, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to Google you and try to find your website. So it doesn't That's even right. have to be the Today Show. If you get my attention, even in a small way, I'm looking for your online brand. And you know what? I'm kind of sad if I can't find it. And I'm kind of like, oh, no, that was an opportunity because you could have totally, I mean, like if you just captured my attention by telling this really poignant story on, you know, Instagram or, or LinkedIn or Facebook. And I'm, I'm so into it. You said you're writing a book. I'm so excited. Like if, if, if I had found your website and you had captured, I, I would have signed up for your email list in a freaking heartbeat. So that always right. makes me sad when I see those missed opportunities. Right. So pay attention and start, get those opportunities. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just all building your, building your tribe. So, and building the people mm -hmm. that are interested in your story, which as my authors know, is just the most amazing thing. I mean, that's why we write memoirs. I was just, I posted about this on Facebook the other day. I got really wonderful piece of fan mail from Kenya, this woman who had the same surgery as I did, as back surgery, which is the focus of my book, The Power of the Curve. And just, I mean, it's just, and I, I told my authors, I said, this is why we do this, you all. This is why. This is why we tell our stories, so that we can connect with someone around the other side of the world that said, I read your story. I had the same, a similar experience with you. Your story really touched me. Thank you for writing your book. That's why we do it. Absolutely. And Absolutely. without marketing, and I could tie it right back to Melanie, <laughs> without, without <laughs> marketing, without me constantly talking about my book, as all of you, have, you know, heard on the show today, without the constant marketing, without, you know, not being afraid of boring people or being repetitive or annoying people, you know, without the marketing, without the, you know, all the work that I've done to keep my book out in front of people, would this woman have ever heard of my book? Probably not. You know, we can probably say no, she wouldn't have, because yeah. everything... <laughs> Every mark, every piece of marketing you do, that is how people get to know about you and your book. It's like I say that, you know, authors, authors who would play, if you would plan a party and you would get the venue, the food, the entertainment, you have an amazing outfit to wear, but then you never send out the invitations. That's the equivalent of not marketing your book. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, same page on everything. Anything else? Uh, how can people learn more about you? I'm sure you have some, some products or services that people should check out. Where should people go? And I'll make sure that the information is in the show notes as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have um, uh, the Ultimate Book Marketing Checklist, which I'd love to give your authors. Um, and you can just Ooh. go to V. I'll give you the, the link to it. It's vipdigital.live slash checklist. All right. I will make sure I get that into the show notes so people can have that. That sounds like a super valuable checklist. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Melanie, for being on the show today. Super appreciate your, your stories and all your expertise. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. And as always, thank all of you for joining me here on your daily writing slash marketing habit, where I am helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. Be sure and drop by my Inc. Authors group on Facebook to connect with other authors like yourselves. Until tomorrow, happy writing.